Now y'all seen that thumbnail. Five things that y'all missed about the Spider-Man 2 story in the gameplay demo. Or, or maybe you peeped it and didn't miss it. I don't know what y'all do. I'm looking at me because I messed up. Nah, I'm just playing with y'all. Let's get into this. So the first thing is that in the demo they showed us, it's probably Miles' first time seeing Peter in the black suit. Why y'all ask? Well, y'all remember this? New threads? In that part, we could clearly see that Miles asked new threads with a question mark as if he had never seen this suit before. Which, to your boy, could mean one of two things. Either Peter had been using it without telling Miles and without fighting side by side with Miles. In other words, he was hiding it and only brought it out when he was going on his own fighting tours and putting it away when he saw Miles or other people who knew he was Spider Man. Or, that he just got the suit. But the signs in the demo kind of point to the latter. Like in the beginning when he's fighting Craven's people, he doesn't seem surprised about what abilities the suit is giving him. He looks like he's fighting as a seasoned fighter with those abilities. And the combination of the clarification that Miles hadn't seen this suit and the fact that Peter is a seasoned fighter with this suit shows that he's been fighting kind of in secret with the suit. And bringing up all of that is without mentioning that Yuri Lowenthal, the voice for Peter, as well as some other folks who worked on the game, but specifically Yuri made a point to say that they were trying to push the idea that the suit was an addiction, you know, like a drug. In this case, the drug would be power, because we all know that Peter gets stronger with the black suit. Now, of course, it's at the expense of him losing himself, which is never okay, never lose yourself. With all that being said, I think the demo makes it kind of clear, without saying it straight up, that this is not their first encounter with Craven. Of course, we have that first cutscene in the beginning and then the six month time skip to then Peter busting out the basement with the black suit on. Cause of course, we all gotta remember too, that Peter is from Queens. So I'm thinking what he did was he went home to get the suit, probably thinks that wearing the suit is gonna give him his best chance at beating Craven and his people. Basically, your boy can see there being a narrative where after Peter first First encounters the black suit and uses it a few times he realizes that he starts to get addicted and that he starts to feel weaker or incomplete or not powerful without it and then he kind of weans himself off of it and then he's finally off of it and he uses it as his ace in the hole when he has to fight Craven and his people because it's his last resort and he thinks it's the only chance he has what would be real crazy though is if they really have been fighting Craven for the last six months now the second thing y'all may have missed is that Peter wants to save Doc Connors or the lizard because he feels like he has the best chance at saving Harry. So if y'all played the first Marvel Spider-Man in back in 2018, then you knew that Harry was sick and that was part of the story. If y'all didn't play it yet, I apologize for that spoiler. The reason why I say that Peter wanted to save Doc Connors because he feels like he could save Harry is because of this line. Can't lose Connors. Harry's dying and he's the only one who can help. In that same part, Pete basically makes it clear that he warned Craven and his people about going after Connors and that now whatever happens is on them. Basically, he's like, I might kill your ass. And now that I think about it, it's possible that the feeling of powerlessness also comes from the fact that Peter may feel like he really may not be able to cure Harry. Maybe the suit giving Peter more power makes him feel more powerful, but he still realizes that, you know, no matter how physically powerful he is, he's still gonna have to figure out another way to save Harry. I think that'll all play a role into the story, but we'll talk more about that later. And the third thing that I think folks may have missed is that the drone that Genki uses throughout the whole demo actually used to be Craven and his peoples. Remember when Miles first calls him and he asks if he still has that drone that he hijacked. And Genki says, yeah, it's been hard hiding it from his mom, but he still has it. Genki, the lizard's loose at the fish market. Must be sushi night. You still got that hunter drone you hijacked? Been really tough hiding it from my mom, but yeah, I'll boot up and see you there. And that's where he meets him at the place with the gym and where they first went in the lizard and Peter drops down with his black suit. Now they technically never say straight up that that drone used to be Craven and his peoples. But remember later in the demo at the end where they do the alley-oop and Genki says, yeah, basically says he could get close because he's one of them. He could get under their radar because they're just going to think it's one of their drones. So they're not going to attack it. Essentially, Genki having hijacked one of the drones just confirms that this isn't their first run-in with Craven and his people. Now the fourth thing that I think some folks may have missed is the confirmation of the enemies that will be in the game from the gameplay demo when we first saw the digital version of new york and they were showing all the enemies i just want to go through that and let y'all know who was confirmed in that obviously craven is going to be in it because he was the one looking at it then it's black cat prowler wraith tombstone which some people didn't seem to remember but tombstone was in the first one in spider-man 2018 fisk 
was in the back left taskmaster was in the right next to the lizard up front and shocker a lot of people didn't notice that that was shocker because that's right before the clip ends but if you ever paused it and was able to zoom in you can see that that's shocker also before they get to fisk if y'all notice this it changes a bunch of times like it's going through a database and in the database it does show rhino and electro and i can't remember who the other one was but i'm not saying they're gonna be in the game fisk looks like he's definitely gonna be in the game but those ones that it cycled through may not be in it because we've already fought them a bunch of times in the other one so i'm assuming that they might not be in it but then of course the last one is venom from the trailer remember the teaser trailer that let us know venom was going to be in it so we know we're going to have at least two main enemies and i still want to say that there's a high chance that we're going to see the green goblin norman osborne's version but i'll get to that in the next point but just to clarify the goblin was not confirmed everybody else was all right number five so the fifth thing that i think people may or may not have missed that i already talked about was that the story has to do with folks being ill and being on a timetable so we already know that harry had been sick from the first game on and then at the beginning of this demo we saw that it jumped six months later my assumption is that harry only has a limited amount of time which is why Pete's like, I need to go get Connors. Now, just to give you a little background on Connors, yes, he's the lizard, but he's originally a doctor. He's a biologist that starts to study the biology of reptiles extensively. Why? Because they have the ability to regenerate. Basically, he's trying to learn cell regeneration and the secrets to what that is and how to crack that code so that he can apply it to humans. Now, he becomes a lizard because he creates a serum where he obviously turns into the lizard. In The Amazing Spider-Man, you saw him trying to turn everybody into lizards. He was actually thinking that it would help by carrying people because then they could regenerate generate cells that are either dead cells or bad cells of course everybody doesn't want to turn into a lizard so that's where the problem comes in not to mention that the side effects of the serum hadn't been thoroughly vetted out but all that is to say because of doc connor's field of expertise and the studying and research that he had been doing on biology and the cell regeneration that's why pete feels like he might be able to help harry the assumption is that harry has a terminal illness that has to do with cells which originally brought me to the conclusion of the craving the last hunt situation which i now actually don't think it is a craving the last hunt situation because i went back and watched the original teaser trailer where i realized that it was basically just craving voiceover talking about how he's been looking for an equal for forever and they show miles and pete getting ready to fight venom who was confirmed in that teaser trailer you know where he's also like yes, we will. when he's talking about giving craven that challenge that he had been waiting for and just to explain the tie-in of the craven the last hunt situation quick summary is that in that comic book craven was terminally ill and basically he was saying he'd rather die from the targets he hunts or by somebody hunting him essentially he wants to go out like a warrior and not just waiting around for it to all be over but all that being said in the course of that the venom symbiote lashes itself onto him and he's got a venom situation going on for a bit that comic book ends real crazy or because i came to a different conclusion never mind all that point is i think the story is going to be driven by what's going on surrounding the situation with harry at least for peter's part of the narrative i mean we know there's going to be somewhat of a dual narrative which they kind of said already between pete and miles and they're going to have their own issues and and situations going on so it's going to be the first dual narrative that i'm really interested in since the last of us part two hell it might be the only dual narrative since the last of us part two and honestly whatever happens with harry may determine whether we see a norman osborne green goblin or not he could be grief stricken Hopefully it's not that though. But yeah, yeah, just to recap the five things that people may have missed while watching this gameplay demo is that number one, at this point in the game, it's probably Miles' first time seeing Pete in the black suit, but it's probably not Pete's first time using the black suit. Number two is that Pete wants to save Connor so he can save Harry. Number three is that Genki's drone confirms that they have had several run-ins with Kraven. Number four are the enemies. And number five is that a lot of this narrative could be surrounded by Harry and what goes on with him. And it could determine whether or not we see the Green Goblin as another villain. But all right, y'all. I appreciate y'all for watching this. And I will say this, which I didn't think I was going to bring up in this vid. But in the new Across the Spider-Verse, apparently there was a scene where Genki was playing Marvel Spider-Man 2. So they're hinting at some things that I actually talked about in my last short about Insomnia creating their own Marvel Universe. So y'all go check that out. But I love y'all. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to catch y'all in the next vid, all right? Peace.